hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, it's part 7 of our Toys and Joys dump truck and pup trailer build. Well, we have made some great progress in both the parts that we've made and the assembly that we've done so far in the six parts that we have under our belt. But honestly, I need a break. So, I'm tired of making parts for now. When you get to that point, you need to stop. You need to stop and move on to something different because once you start getting complacent or tired of doing something, you're not really into it, that's when accidents happen and that's when stuff goes wrong. So I'm gonna turn away from the smaller parts and all that jazz and we're gonna turn our attention to the wheels. Now there's a lot to do for the wheels here, guys. I'm going to be making the wheels for both the trailer and for the truck all at the same time. But if we look here at the one drawing, there are several types of wheels here that are listed. On the dump truck alone, there are 10 wheels that are two and three quarters of an inch in diameter. But these center drop down wheels here, there are two of them and they are only two and a half in diameter. So you really want to pay attention to that. There is really not much information here on any of these drawings as to how to make these wheels or what they're supposed to look like. So I'm going to be making my version of highway wheels and that's what today's show is going to be, a tutorial on making wheels. I have done tutorials on making highway wheels before, um, but I've changed up my methods just a little bit. So we're going to freshen it up and do a new one. But just keep that in mind, guys, that the trailer actually takes 12 2 and 3 quarter diameter wheels and the truck takes 10 2 and 3 quarter and 2 2 and a half. Um, the hubs are also different. On the 2 and 3 quarter wheels, those center hub holes are 1 and 3 eighths in diameter, but on the drop down wheels, they're actually only 1 and a quarter. So that's something you really want to keep in mind. So what we're going to do first is I need to get some three quarter inch thick walnut. I'm going to get that milled and then we're going to see you over at the bench. Well, I have my walnut milled up. I have way more than what I need, um, but it's better to be looking at it than looking for it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a marking template. So on some scrap hardboard, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out a three inch circle here on the hardboard and right in the middle where our pivot point is for our compass, I'm going to drill a 532nd diameter hole. Once I get that done, we're going to take this over to the scroll saw and very carefully cut it out. As well, we need a template for the two smaller wheels. So I'm going to adjust my compass. I'm going to bring it down to be two and three quarters of an inch. So that'd be a one and three eighths inch radius and the same process here. We're going to mark the circle on some scrap hardboard and right in the middle, we are going to drill a 532nd diameter hole and then carefully cut it out at the scroll saw. Well, you may be wondering what the whole point is of making a template to draw a circle. It's all about layout here, guys. It's all about saving stock and not wasting it. Wood is expensive. So what I'm going to do is I'm using the templates here to lay out where we're going to be able to get the most use out of our wood, especially in a piece like this where we can see there's quite a bit of cracking or checking or uh, imperfections in the wood. So what is with this hole in the middle? Well, this 532nd diameter hole gives us the ability to do a little bit of a center punch here to show us where to drill our holes. And once we have that lined up here, we can remove our punch, make sure that it's lined up in the center so we will use our template to mark out all of our wheels. Now, I've also marked on the template the designation for what wheel they're for. There we go. So there is one wheel carefully marked out. So mark out all your wheels and then we can head over to the drill press. So for each one of your two and three quarter wheels, right in the middle, 
we're going to drill an inch and a quarter diameter hole that is three eighths of an inch deep. Well, I think I said the depth of those holes was three eighths of an inch. The actual depth is half an inch. Sorry about that. So that was your two and three quarter wheels. Now for the two and a half wheels, I've installed a one inch Forstner bit. And in those two wheels, we will drill in the center a half inch deep, one inch diameter hole. All right, and the last step over here at the drill press is that we're going to drill a quarter inch through hole right in the center of each one of our Forstner bit holes. Now you may notice that I'm not using a brad point bit. I'm using just a regular twist bit. That's because I want to use the divot left behind uh, by the Forstner bit as kind of my center punch. It won't give me a perfect result, but it's going to get me a lot closer than if I were to use a brad point. And with all of our holes drilled, I'm now going to take these over to the scroll saw and cut them out as close to the lines as I can. It's okay to go outside the lines, but try not to go inside of the lines. Let's get all of these cut, and then once that's done, we need to head over to the lathe. Well, we need to mount our wheels for turning. And whenever I do wheels here on the show, the most questions that I get are about this. And this is a universal pen mandrill. And this is the entire reason that I drill the holes in my wheels at a quarter of an inch. And that is because this shaft here is a quarter of an inch in diameter. So we need to set this up in order to accept our wheels. Now, I'm not gonna turn the two and a half ones right now. The process will be the same for the two and a half as what it is for these two and three quarter diameter wheels. So we're just gonna work on the two and three quarters. And I'm actually gonna start them off at four at a time. So the first thing I want to do, this mandrel is adjustable by loosening this 532nd inch allen key so you can adjust its length i like to use bushings to give me a little bit of spacing it doesn't matter the bushing this is actually for a razor handle it makes no difference if you have a pen mandrel chances are you have some bushings if you don't have some bushings a little piece of dowel with a quarter inch hole in it or a little tiny block of wood with a quarter inch hole will work just as well so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take four of our wheels and I'm going to slide them here onto our pen mandrel. And they're all the same, so it really doesn't matter. They all have to be two and three quarters of an inch. Now the last one I'm going to slide on, you'll notice that all of these center hub holes are facing this way. The last one, I want to turn it around. And the only reason for that is because I want this bushing to be able to have something to bite on. So we're just gonna finish adjusting our length there of our pen mandrel. I'll tighten up this Allen key screw. There we go. And there you go. There is our wheels now mounted on the pen mandrel and ready for turning. So I'm gonna take all of these four at a time and we're gonna turn them down till their outer diameter is two and three quarters of an inch. Well, at this point, it's time to go to single wheels. You can't do these four at a time anymore. It's one at a time. It's a time consuming process. So I have one wheel mounted on our pen mandrel and this hole in the middle, if you remember, we drilled this to an inch and a quarter, but it has to be one and three eighths. So it needs to be increased by one eighth of an inch. So why not drill it to one and three eighths right from the get go? Guys, it's because it's so easy for this to get off center. And if I turn this on just quickly, you might be able to see that that hole is not perfectly centered. So all we need to do is we're going to place a mark here from the edge of our piece at 11 sixteenths in from the edge, just like that. Once we get our mark, we now want to take a small parting tool and I'm just gonna drive it right in here to increase the size of our hole and it will also make it so that it's perfectly centered.
and we can check that measurement and it looks like it's a little off because I can still see my pencil marks. So I'll just use my miniature skew chisel here and clean up the last little bit. Now it can be a tiny bit larger than the one and three eighths. You just don't want to go any smaller. So now we need to do a little bit of marking here. So the flat section that's left here, I'm going to place a mark one sixteenth of an inch out from our center hub hole and one sixteenth of an inch in from the corner of our wheel. So while we're still spinning here, we just want to take our parting tool and right at that 1 16th, we're just going to make a 1 16th inch deep rabbit, I guess we'll call it. And then we're gonna slide our tool rest around to the front of the wheel here and we need to mark a sixteenth of an inch in from each edge. And now using that same parting tool, we're just going to cut in until these two lines meet on this side. We'll do the same on this side. Okay, we're having some issues there with it coming out of the headstock. So, because we're done the work in the front, guys, you can put your tailstock back in place. Now, I've actually cut this a little too wide, I can see, but I'm not concerned. Tires wear at different rates. They all look different. Don't sweat it. So now we're going to come in 1 16th of an inch from each of the edges here that are left, like that. We're going to go one right in the middle, and then one in between in the middle of each of these lines. You can either eyeball it or you can measure it, whichever you prefer. And now here comes a little bit of a tricky part. It's not really tricky, but we're going to use a small skew chisel and using the very tip here, the toe of our skew chisel, we're just going to make our treads. It's just a light touch. like that. Guys, all the rest is sanding. So I'm going to get some dust collection on here and we're going to sand the very front face to round it off between our hub and our little divot that we put there. And as well, I'm going to sand the edges to round them off. And that's all she wrote for those tires, guys. So, so do them all like this and get your tires completed. So here's a little trick that can make your wheels look even better. And it's called burnishing. Some of you may already know this, some may not. But essentially you have your wheel mounted up. All your turning and sanding is done. Take some of the wood chips from this wheel and put them up against your wheel and turn the speed up.
And when you're done, let me just show you the difference between one that's been burnished and one that hasn't been burnished, unburnished. Look at the difference. There's like a sheen to these. So give them a little bit of a burnishing, guys, and finish them off nicely. And after considerable amount of hours working, you end up with this. Now, I've done laser embellishing on mine. You don't have to. I just had the X2S one out here testing it. So I thought, why not? And added them to the wheels. Guys, if you don't have the equipment, if you don't have the skill set, if you don't have the ambition to make these wheels, there is absolutely no shame in purchasing pre-made wheels. So don't feel that you have to make your own. I just prefer to do that. So now it's time to move on to our rims. And for that, we're going to need some half inch thick maple. Well, I have a bunch of the half inch thick stock and what I have done is I've cut it to a dimension of one and five eighths by one and five eighths. So what we're going to do first is we're going to mark the centers of each one of our blanks and in the middle of each one of our rims that we need for our larger wheels, we are going to drill a hole that is one inch in diameter and we're going to leave one eighth of an inch material at the bottom. So we're going to go three eighths of an inch deep. Once you get that done, you then need to drill a quarter inch through hole just like we did with the wheels. Now, you want to do this for each of your large wheels. However, you only need enough of these things to show on the outside wheels of your entire assembly. So for us, six for the truck and 12 for the trailer. So make spares because these things will break. Well, I've taken a small scrap of one eight thick plywood and I have cut in the middle a one and three eighths diameter hole. I just did this over at the scroll saw. I cut the plywood to be the same size as our blank. And what I'm going to do is on a few of these blanks, I'm going to trace out this circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just give it a little marking here. Now this is gonna serve a couple of purposes. One of them is going to make it so that we can take this over to the scroll saw and lop the corners off. Once we get that done, it will also let us know when we're getting close to our final dimension. Just close. You don't want to use this as a guideline. So, so there's three marked. I'm going to mark three more for the other side and just put them aside for now. So we're going to take these three over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut the corners off of them. Well, this is pretty much a repeat of the wheels at this point. I have three of our rims lined up on the pen mandrel with bushings on either side to give me some spacing. And step number one, we're gonna turn these to round. And once you get them turned around, we can turn them to their final dimension of one and three eighths of an inch. Okay, and with the external diameter done at one and three eighths, we need to change the setup of our pen mandrel and go back to just single turnings, guys. So only one rim on the mandrel. Well, I'm going to try not to get in the way of the camera, but if we look here at the drawing, we can see that the measurement here on our rims, the outer thickness of the walls of the rims, it's just shy, and I mean just shy, of one eighth of an inch. So we are gonna mark that here on our rims from the outside edge. We're going to mark, there we go, just shy of one eighth of an inch. We'll just double check it and that looks good. So at this point, guys, this is a very gentle turning. You want to be careful because if you're going to break it, this is when you're going to break it. 
So make sure your chisel is sharp. I'm going to be using um, a skew chisel in this case, and we're just gonna very carefully get in here and remove this material. I'm a little too close to that brass bushing for my liking, so I'm gonna to switch to a parting tool. Okay, and all that's left to do now is I want to get in here, we're gonna give this a little bit of a sanding, but as well, we're gonna take off the sharp edges here on the edge of our piece. That looks good. And that is one rim done. So let's just check it on a wheel and see how we like it. Okay, truth be told, it's a little big. So no trouble. We're gonna very carefully take it down the last little bit. Now guys, this is where you really wanna be careful. Remember before when I said, if there's gonna be a time that you break it, it's now. Okay, now, it's really now. <laughs> so, if we break it, no trouble. We've got, uh, we've got some spares. So, we're just going to be careful here and very light passes. So, there you go. There's something to be said, guys, about checking to make sure that it fits in your wheel before you get on to the center uh, turning and fixing that up. That's my, my own fault. All right, we'll just check that. You know what, that's probably pretty good there. All right, so now let's check it on the wheel and see what we think. There you go, and there is our rim. Now it does protrude a little bit from the tire, but that's okay, that's kind of what I want. It gives it that three-dimensional kind of appearance here. So, you need to turn one of these for every one of your wheels. The only difference is on your drop-down set of wheels, remember, it's a smaller dimension, so be careful with the turning. Once you get those finished, you can glue them in place. But guys, don't just glue them in all willy-nilly and think that they're gonna be perfect. Use your pen mandrill as a guide. Put it right through and glue them in place, making sure that your center holes line up. And it really doesn't take too long before you have all the rims done, including these two smaller ones here that are for our drop-down wheels. Now, here's the deal. None of mine are glued in. You can glue these rims in if you want, um, but do not glue them to your model. You can make your axle pins. There's no problem. I already showed you how to do that but do not glue them in. There's more to do to these that we're gonna cover a little later. Also, you should have two wheels that do not have any rims. These are for your front tires of the dump truck. These rims are a completely different animal. And again, we're gonna cover that just a little later in the build. But now that you have all of these done, here's my advice. Pick out your best looking wheels for the outside, the ones that are gonna show with the rims because for your dualies, they don't have rims. You don't need a rim here. And in fact, we didn't even really need to turn this center hole, but I turn them all in case something messes up. That way I have backup. So choose all your best looking tires for the outside of your dump truck. And then, well, we can move on. And unfortunately, once again, we've run out of time on today's show. Guys, when it comes to doing these wheels, you really have to pack your patience. While this show ended up being, what, 20, 25 minutes long, it was three days. Three days of milling the stock, three days of cutting it to shape, of doing the drilling, of turning on the lathe. Most of it was standing at the lathe, but either way, it was still three days of work. It was nonstop. It was relentless. And of course... It would have been less if I would have just done the tires only for the dump truck, but I wanted to get them all done and over with. 
Um, that way they're all ready to go when I actually get to that stage of the next part of the build being the pup trailer. Either way, it is a great way to spend three days, but take breaks, guys. Don't try to do it all in one shot. It's exhausting. For me, standing at the lathe causes me a lot of back issues. So it was frequent breaks of going over to the bench, taking measurements, checking things out in the plants, kind of thinking ahead of what I want to do next. Take breaks. That holds true for anything in our craft, not just a model build. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We've got a fantastic audience base, and I'm hoping you're going to consider becoming a part of that. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, guys. I hope you're enjoying the series up until now and that you're following along at home with your own set of plans. If you have any questions about the build or you're having any problems, of course, you can always send me a message or an email asking your, your questions, or you can just drop it in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, guys. I want to thank you for tuning in. But more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.